Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Folks, this has been quite a weekend for that matter. We had uh, pretty well projected to do some certain things here on the show today. And we want to at least acknowledge and um, and send out uh, the, uh, the RFP, RIP, if you will, rest in peace with those individuals that were shot. Some 50 individuals were shot in Florida, and some 50-some-odd uh, individuals were also injured. They still don't know whether or not that's going to be the last count for those who are there, because uh, the AR-15, I'm very familiar with being a former Marine. Mm -hmm. And, you know, basically what happened just in a, in a very simple form is that when, you, when that round goes in, it goes in, it goes in deep, and then it just, just bursts. And it just just tears up everything, and so that's that's a very heavy piece. You think there were m more I than one shooter? I think there had shooter? to be more people. I mean, I, I just 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 this is just me, in my opinion, because um, uh, it took so long, and then and all the negotiations and this, that, and the other, and folks were hiding into the bathrooms and things right. of that nature. How do you how do you prevent people from going in the, going out the back? Mm -hmm. and the front. I mean, it's, it's something that's wrong. So I just like to let it just sit there to a certain degree. To well, since out. you brought that up, I wonder what your policy is on gun control. Well, let, let, let me throw this a piece out. Okay. First off, this time around, I want you to know, she just kind of threw it out. I want to make sure we clear things out. Lanita is going to interview me today. Oh, no, no one can interview Bruce Broussard. She's going to interview me today. I'm just, just today. interrupting and him just, talking. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> He'll say things and I'll say, oh, Bruce, expand on that. No see, one inter see, interviews Mr. Broussard. Yeah. He talks, and I'm just a paragraph. But, the, but I just want to thank. Wait a minute, you. but you got to remember see, now. At see the what same I mean? Time, he talks. If I didn't say that, Lenita, understand where I'm coming from, <laughs> then I would be interviewing you about your running for office, and we don't want to do that. We this don't want to right? do that this you, time. We want to get this other piece on. Okay. I want to thank you for all the help you gave candidates, and what I appreciate about Voters Digest and Portland Cable Access. I know it's not the name of it anymore. What is it called? PC and Portland Cable Media. Portland Community Media. Portland Community Media. Media. Right. Uh, the format that you gave candidates, candidates that didn't have a lot of money, candidates that had unpopular opinions, and not just candidates within Multnomah County and the city of Portland, but you provided candidates in statewide elections a platform. And I don't know if anyone has ever said thank you for well, doing thank that. Thank you. But you're the one, you're the one that goes out, you find their phone number and you harass them. Yes, <laughs> yes, like, Come on my yes. show. You know, the issues. you know how Bruce is. Yeah. Come on my show. <laughs> you say, oh, okay. So I think that we are all indebted to the outlet of thank community you. communications that you provide. And no one else did that. OPB, Oregon Public Broadcasting, didn't do that. The traditional media outlets here in Portland didn't do that. Uh, the electronic media in Portland and Multnomah County didn't do that. It was you. And I think all the candidates owe you a debt of gratitude. Well, gee, I thank you very much. But, you know, and I'll, I'll say this to you, is that, one, I want to make sure I give the accolades also to PCM. Right. The fact that we've got this medium here. And secondly, I have, I've run for office in, in, in several other areas and several, mm -hmm. several times. But the other thing is I've been very interested in issues. And we have some major issues here facing us mm -hmm. here in Portland. People, new, new folks are coming in, and you can't say no to new folks. If they got the money, they can buy anything they want to. But the fact of the matter is we, we do have a nice small community as far as Portland, Oregon is concerned. And I'm not just talking about, I'm not just talking about black folks. Okay. I'm talking about people across the board, really. but we do have a black community. We've always maintained that it was a black community, but in all due respect, they tend not to want to recognize it. And I've always had that interest, if you will, of making it progressive and growing and all that other good stuff. Mm -hmm. But so it's, it was very important that issues, issues were at the table. And uh, I guess we can go on. You want to probably ask me. Well, what do you think was the number one issue in this local election? And then we want to talk about national politics because we now have a Republican candidate and we now have a Democratic candidate. Okay, I think the one, the, the number one issue in this last election, local, local, lo local, was Ted Wheeler running for mayor. Now, was how was that an issue? I was concerned about that because, in all due respect, I didn't feel that he really knew what the issues were. You know, he was treasurer, finally. I mean, he spent he spent one term here at Multnomah County, mm -hmm. you know, as county as the chair. He was that chair aspect of right, it. But right. that's just not enough time, if you will, to be able to know all the issues that are within this particular area. The county was 
heavy as far as mental illness and things of that nature. He didn't have that background. Right. I mean, he was sure he was a, he was a number man in this that, and this. Then he went right up to the deal. I think he I thought he had other ideas. Do you think that people in in power wanted a number man up there because of the horrible job that Charlie Hale has done? Sort of let the city go to pot. Well, the thing about Charlie didn't want to, you know, he, was, he was leaving too. I mean, yeah. Charlie spent his time back when, if you will. Okay. And then he got in transportation aspect of it. I think they, I think he called him in because they, there was nobody around else that they wanted to identify. And so, boom, there he was. And then, and then I think that um, uh, it would not have been an issue with Charlie, if you will. He would have spent another 40 year term. But then all of a sudden, the, the Kulingoski, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, uh, I'm thinking about. Uh, the uh, governor, 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 right. Kit Hopper. When mm -hmm. Kit Hopper went through that other piece, and all that other stuff came down, uh, he was forced to run. He got the piece he was going to get out, but but he couldn't. All that other stuff came about. Then all of a sudden, here's the vacancy. So who's going to run? I think Charlie Hill has a big job offer somewhere. He heard it here first on Voters Digest from Grassroot News. I think Charlie Hill. There's a big job offer after the election is over. You'll hear about him taking an offer somewhere. Light rail. That's where he was before. Right, right. See, so, that's where he was. He left that right. job, but he's still sitting up there basically as the light rail czar, if you will, going around the country and mm -hmm. creating it. So and I think some yeah, it's gonna be still here. large corporation offered yeah. him a job, made yeah. him an offer he couldn't yeah. refuse. So yeah, I agree. And, uh, I, you know, what's interesting about Ted Wheeler, let me share this story mm -hmm. with you. So I'm on the campaign trail. We're at Rose City Neighborhood Association, mm -hmm. and one of his surrogates comes up to me. She's passing out campaign literature. So she approaches me, and she looks at me, and, oh, my God, she's colored. Ah. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. No, this, that's not the story. The story uh -huh. is she sees that I'm a woman of color, and she's passing out uh, Ted Wheeler's campaign literature, yeah. and she sees me. She says, oh, you're running for mayor. And I yeah. said, no, that's the other black woman <laughs> running for mayor. I know we all look alike, yeah. but that's the other I, black I, woman. I, <laughs> now, Deborah Harris, a yeah. beautiful woman yep, of color, yep, yep. but we do not look anything no, alike. No, no, no. So no, I, it was no, great telling her, no. you know, I know you all that's think good. we that's look good. alike. How did she react then? Uh, she was sort of taken back. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, I don't care. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because, you know, this is Portland, and uh, that's why, you know, I ran to highlight the hypocrisy of yeah. liberalism, yeah. and that to me is a hypocrisy of mm -hmm. liberalism. We all look alike. Mm -hmm. Now, she can't tell the difference between myself and Ms. Harris, and, uh, she needs her glasses clean, but there are striking differences. Well, you male, whether you're male or female. Yeah, you're, you're and it was great telling her. Hey, yeah. we all look alike. <laughs> Soon they're gonna say, "Is Bruce your brother?" Yeah, exactly. And you know what? Exactly. He is, exactly. Folks. Exactly. Bruce Broussard. Exactly. Not only are you, my brother, but you're, you're the brother to a lot of us in politics. Those that ran with uh, 750. Uh, dollars. Yep. That was our cap, and it was the agitation and the outlet that Mr. Broussard gave us through Voters Digest, and not just him, but as a producer. Yep. I always want to thank the folks behind the camera in the control room. So thank you very much for all your hard work in uh, during this campaign season. Well, you've been there too. Uh, we have. And, I've and been on are. both sides of the are. camera. And we still are. <laughs> And what's amazing to me is how consistent you are. So let me ask you this. Yeah, the sure, only question sure. I'm going to get in with Mr. <laughs> Broussard, do you plan on running again? And if so, which office? I'll always run. And normally that's, 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 I will be getting together with my staff. I've got, I've got quite a staff, you know, in the Oregon Voters Digest. Yes, you do. And I just so happen to know her name, her name happens to be Kay Bridges, and I, I know her real real well mm -hmm. and she's been in politics too quite well so we're always running she's a small business issues. woman too and, yeah so she's I like small that, business right. and it's about issues you know we live in this society mm -hmm. and and because we because of the kinds of things we do in the Oregon Voters Digest and in, in her business and whatever we're, we're constantly looking at what's going on in this state and in our local area and as a result of that you're looking at it and then you say well hey look uh, you got to get normally I try to use this format to interview folks, but just right. like I said, not getting back to the local campaign. But when I invited, when I knew that Ted Willow was going to run for mayor, I called him up and invited him to come on. And his people said, no, he, he will not appear on your show until after the election, mm -hmm. after you win the election. Huh, okay. So then I waited and waited and waited and waited. And, and then all of a sudden, I, he never talked about the issues, and I called back. I said, well, we're still not going to do anything. And then okay. at the last minute, I ran. 
Okay. So you're right. It was about the issues. Okay. There was no one on as as Now, do you think Wheeler's camp put some people up to run so that they wouldn't be forced into a runoff? Because I I wanted to force my incumbent, uh, Fritz, into a runoff, and we had a number of candidates show up. Now, I must say I I decided to run. I wrestled with the question Mm -hmm. until the very end. Mm -hmm. In fact, I ended up registering on the last. Yeah, right. Same day. (laughs) Did you do that? Same day. Same day. I know because it's such a big question. Should I put myself out here? But the one thing I learned, we are running so that other people who see this show, I want you to know you can run for political office. Yes, you can. You don't need a million dollars. That's right. You don't necessarily need an alphabet in the beginning Mm -hmm. of your name or the Mm -hmm. end of your name. Mm -hmm. And you don't need to feel that you have to run up and down the street butt naked because Mm -hmm. there are boundaries you can place on your personal life and so forth. We are running to show you that you can run and you should run. We cannot let a small group of people control the political situation here in Portland, Oregon or Mm -hmm. Multnomah County. Mm -hmm. That's why I admire you so much, Bruce, because you always run so to answer the second part of yes, my question well, what office will you run for again well you know in all due respect i i may in all due respect i may run for mayor again you know i don't know where will is going to go you know what i'm saying i mean i don't know what he's going to do well why don't you run uh, for an office that uh, you can you local? might win well, Not to say that you won't win. Did you know that Mr. Broussard came in third in the mayor's race on a poll, but they suppressed that information? Had that information got out that Mr. Broussard had come in third, he would have been able to, push the to do some yeah. fundraising, yes. to push the issue. Yes. Yes. But because they suppressed that, because he's not your typical yeah traditional candidate, and I thought that was really unfair, Mr. Broussard. Well, in all due respect, I would have thought that even Willie would have given me a call. Had he given me a call, I probably wouldn't have been running. If not that, we would have talked about the issues. I would have explained myself, et cetera, et cetera. In fact, I I even had the option of saying, okay, fine. You can even come on the show periodically, Mm -hmm. and I'll educate you about the issue indirectly. You got me? Or if not that, I'll even join the campaign Mm -hmm. if you you want to understand what the issues were about. Okay? So it's very important. Uh, it's very important for this time because we, we're living in some tough times. We, we are. We're transitioning. The word, uh, the word, uh, 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 what's it? The, 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 the thing about, uh, gentrification is on, is on the is on the block right now. No one is talking about it. Well, they, everyone. They, they I disagree, Mr. Broussard. They, they, everyone is talking about but gentrification. But what is the definition and what they're coming from? No one talks about the definition. Now, what is the as, definition? as it relates to here? As it relates to poor. As it relates. As it relates. To as it relates to Harlem, New York. I mean, right. what's your That's definition right. of gentrification? Well, gentrification is, is that uh, you make it uh, well. From a historical standpoint, they made it very clear to, to, from a real estate standpoint, you know, in that whole business about the ships and this, that, and the other, that they had to live within a certain areas, and then realtors would be given the word. Talking about redlining. The redlining okay. piece, the redlining aspect of it. But then all of a sudden, uh, when there's no need for redlining, you got me, then it's open to the public, if mm-hmm. you will. You got me? Mm-hmm. And when they, when they open up to the public, in all due respect, all of a sudden property goes up. You know, one prop, one piece of property may be worth twenty thousand dollars, but they give the property next to it uh, uh, it's a, a value of maybe eighty thousand mm-hmm. dollars. So then people come in with the eighty thousand dollars, then taxes goes up. You know, that kind of a deal. That that is part of the the whole issue of the gentrification aspect of it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then they come in with subsidizing, so they don't really give you the opportunity to own the house. They give you the opportunity to rent the house. Mm-hmm. You see, and renting and owners are two different ball game. So we got a housing authority of Portland, for instance. And I've, I've, I've seen that through the years. you got a housing authority of Portland, but I look at it from input, output, and throughput. You know, input from the standpoint, if you're looking for a place to stay, you rent to start with, mm-hmm. and you learn, the, you learn the benefits, if you will, the definition of ownership, mm-hmm. you see? And then after you've gone a while, you, you know how to respect that piece of property, then they might say, well, okay, fine, we're going to go on and put your family into a, a residence. You're still Are read. you sure you're talking about the Housing Authority of Portland? That's what they're supposed to do. Well, the Housing Authority of <laughs> Portland it runs do. subsidized housing for people on low I know. income. I know, but my point is that that would be another way of getting to home ownership. That's all I'm saying. See, input, output, and throughput. Input, when you first rent the, when you, when you go into the housing authority and you get the home okay. or the apartment, right. then you get, then you take the family, they get a job, and they, they get they, they own a rental piece of property, they own a piece of property, it's a house. Then they put you into that end of it. Then if, after a while, if you learn, the, 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 then you can go and go to the bank 
and do the refill and buy yourself your own home. See what I mean? You don't need to interview Mr. Broussard. He just talks. <laughs> now let's get let me redirect you back on topic. Let's talk about how the political, some of the topics that were brought up in this political year, 2016, I hadn't heard before. Mm -hmm. And one of, and you know, you're talking about home ownership. Where to own a home, you have to have a consistent source yeah, of income. Yeah, that's that's, a home, that's the American be, dream, if you will. High enough to where you can pay your mortgage yeah, and yeah. your taxes. And that's what we're doing. And that. this election cycle brought up the issue that trade policy is hurting people not just in Portland, but all over the country. So you had sort of folks now looking at NAFTA oh, yeah. and looking yeah. at these other yeah. trade policies and yeah. saying they're not necessarily good yeah. for the United States, right. for workers, right. for people who don't have degrees and mm -hmm. so forth, mm -hmm. who don't have specialized skills. Mm -hmm. And one of the issues I brought out is how we need more light manufacturing mm -hmm. jobs mm -hmm. in Portland and in Multnomah County because very few people can sit in front of a computer and make a million dollars. Very few people can sit in front of a computer and, and throw together words and sentences yeah. and get paid to do that. Yeah. So there was also the issue of outsourcing jobs. Mm -hmm. That was a campaign issue. And we've never had those issues about trade, outsourcing, and labor force brought up. And thank God for Bernie Sanders. Mm -hmm. And to some extent, Donald Trump, although I don't know how serious Donald Trump mm -hmm. is about uh, those issues, mm -hmm. but he appeals to people, and correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. he appeals to people who are angry about their situation. The plant closed down, you can't get a job paying 20, 25 bucks an hour working with your hands like you could back mm -hmm. in the day. Mm -hmm. And back in the day, we we're talking about, what, 10, 15 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Right, 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 right. So do you think Donald Trump is now that he's a Republican candidate, do you think he's serious about bringing jobs back to the United States, serious about expanding light manufacturing jobs, or is he just talking? Well, first off, my impression of him when he first got on board, talking about this, he was a developer, like mm -hmm. I was. I built something. He was the only one that had built anything. Okay. Of all the other candidates, the Republicans, he was the only guy that built something. That meant that to me, that meant that he employed people, mm -hmm. that he had to get, he had, he had to do all kinds of things, dot the i's and cross the t's to get something built. That, that's a lot. It lots goes into that kind mm -hmm. of aspect of it, and and I thought that was good because we, like you said, we didn't have those jobs. But in that, in in the construction and in, in the housing housing business aspect of it, that's where he was, and I feel good and strong about that. He's. And then naturally, the, 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 the media, could, they didn't have that background. They hadn't built anything. And there's politics. Politics is a whole different medium aspect of it. They had their own format. So they were trying to talk to that, but in all due respect, he was the only guy that was talking about building. But he made one statement that got a lot of folks on board. The what undoc statement un was Undocumented that? workers. Okay. That was it. Yeah, but he didn't have to denigrate a whole group of no, people, and calling they, them race, no, rapists but and you so know, forth. But you know, in all due respect, Lanita, Everybody feels that way. They're, they're still trying to figure out, you know, I don't like it either. I mean, the fact of the matter is we, we, we made that first bunch, if you will, in the Reagan administration when he ran for office. Okay, now, stop. <laughs> what Mr. Broussard is trying to say, <laughs> that in 1986, uh, President Reagan uh, provided amnesty. The amnesty, right. And it was said that at that point in time, at that point in time, that was going to be it. Mm -hmm. And then that is like anybody else, you know, hey, look, I mean, I, I'm not doing anything and I'm not getting anywhere up in my country because it's, it's either the caste system, either you've got money or you're poor, you're poor or you're rich mm -hmm. in Mexico, mm -hmm. in other areas. Mm -hmm. And so all of a sudden you got, these, these are very family oriented kinds of folks right. and they just said, come on in anyway. Don't worry about it. You can just walk across the border, and boom, boom, boom and we'll and then, and people accommodate because we're very. You think liberal. that that's uh, Mr. Trump's appeal is? Um, that's that that was the, that was got everything to the table, okay. and they didn't respond to it. They didn't respond to it from the standpoint of jobs because by the, by this time, folks were coming back and taking a lot of jobs of poor folks, including blacks. Because I was in the highway business at one point in time in mm -hmm. the construction business, and a lot of the blacks who were working and poor people, who were working in construction as minorities and women and this, that, and the other, those jobs and whatever, guess what? They lost those jobs to the undocumented workers. The contractors hired them. Mm -hmm. They accommodated. Mm -hmm. Sure, they may, may have come in with E-Verify and things of that right. nature. Right, and that's but why they what? created E-Verify. They, they forged a lot of that stuff. That stuff, a lot of, a lot of folks didn't, it, it wasn't tight enough, if you will, mm -hmm. to make sure that that didn't happen. Because in all due respect, if they didn't have a job, they'd been going home. In all due respect, in fact, today, today, 
I mean, one of the issues that I was t talking about in, in the running for mayor was the homeless. You go around looking for Hispanics, they got jobs, and they're, they're, they're at home with, with families, with other folks, if you will. Mm -hmm. And they've, they would have been a lot of homeless Hispanics, well, Mexicans. The Mexicans would have been the folks who were working in the highway. They had jobs. Well, I wish you would have someone from that community on your show. Well, I've tried to get them. I mean, I, I've even in, yeah. I've tried to encourage them to, in many ways to say, hey, look here, for those of you who are a, a legitimate, i.e., American citizens, if you will, why don't you communicate to those folks and get them that necessary papers and, necessary, and make them citizens. And if they can't get those necessary papers, then tell them to go home. It's very simple. Oh, the self-deport doctrine of uh, Mitt Romney. Is that what you think? No, 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 no. My thing is this. Like I said, you either, they've, got, they've got a definition for an, being an American citizen. That's it. I'm just saying if they're an American citizen, and, I, and I've, I've, talked to, I've talked to a number of, of Mexican Americans, okay. and they're saying, Bruce, in all due respect, they're family members. I, I may not like it, but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be anti. I mean, right. I've still got things. They're not gonna like, send grandma or grandpa. No, no, no. And they're gonna say, well, they send some of some of the conversations they've had. And I've been sitting in those conversations with, with you, as you know, uh, California is ours. <laughs> it's, well, ours historically, state. California yeah. used to be part yeah, of Mexico. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but Santa Ana sold it. <laughs> John the same as the only I don't want to go back and Well, he was forced I mean, to sell it by the president at that time. Yeah, I but, remember yeah. it was eight like I remember like I was there, eighteen sixty five. Yeah, yeah. I know I'm two days older than smoke, but I'm not that <laughs> old. I do have a degree in history. Yeah, so. I get you. But would you uh, would you give it away right now? Would you say, away. okay, fine, here's California, let, 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 let's, let's move out? Well, the United States military marched on Mexico City. Yes, so right, let's right, think right, about, right. you know, back in 1865, our people was just coming out of slavery, if not still in slavery, right. and then you had that happen. Okay, so you made that point about okay. Trump. Let's talk about Bernie Sanders. Yeah, Bernie. Why do you think he was so attractive to younger people? Well, because uh, because Clinton couldn't get attracted. Well, that, that and will that deal. same vote, will they follow her? Will they vote begrudgingly for Hillary? Well, you know, people still have some, some history about the Clintons, if you will, that they just don't like, mm -hmm. if you will. It's just another dynasty aspect of it. Some okay. people just don't like the the, the Kennedys. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, not the Kennedys, but the, the Clintons. They might as well be the Kennedys. Yeah, they're the same, yeah. the same boat as, <laughs> the same boat aspect. So Bernie, you know, in all due respect, Bernie is Jewish. You know, a lot of times people would say, well, everybody anti-Jewish. No, but Bernie had, he was hitting the, the right notes, if you will, in, mm -hmm. in many ways. And then he's not even a Democrat. The guy's a socialist. I mean, yeah, you know, so, that that so was it, interesting. That was, that was why would they interesting. why would they take him on? Because she couldn't address those issues. Okay. She could not have addressed those issues. And I don't think she's going to address those issues, which is quite unfortunate, because those issues that he brought up were, were quite pertinent. That's why she's bringing in Elizabeth Warren right now. Yeah, I don't think I yeah. I can see Warren being a consultant on her campaign, a, a member of her cabinet like that. But I predict that Hillary Clinton will pick a white male as a VP, someone to the right of her, because she is going to try to appeal to those Trump voters. Okay. You know what I feel? Tell us. I feel that uh, Elizabeth Warren is there because you still have the servers out there. Still have, you still have some servers. You still have some problems that are sitting on the table trying to figure out how we're going to resolve these situations because we still have to get the major vote. So, but it's a women's deal. It's a women's a woman's time right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. So guess what? We're going to put Elizabeth Warren right here, given the idea that she may be a possibility of a vice president. I so if disagree. anything happens to the Clinton, if anything happens to Clinton, we got Elizabeth. We got another. We got a woman here, I and disagree. we can still keep this peace because it's all about the Supreme Court. I don't think you know it's all about the Supreme that Court. That is what you said. But let me just uh, one thing I want to jump back to Trump. The one thing I can say Trump did is that he got Jeb Bush out of the race or else we'd be dealing with another Bush and Clinton. So the only good thing I can say about Trump is that he got Bush out of the race and got Bush out of the race fairly quick. Well, he got the politicians out. He they weren't the talking they, right. the, the traditional, traditional. politics. They weren't talking about jobs, creating jobs. Right. He he identified the undocumented worker as a job. You know, one guy leaves, you get the you know, and then and that was the other thing that I, I discovered early on, when people start talking about this business about they're doing work that other people don't want. So I went down to the labor department, mm -hmm. you know, the, the employment employment agency. Okay. I said, hey, can you give me a listing of those jobs that that uh, Americans don't want? Can you give me those listing? Right. And did they, they give it to you? Hell no. They said there's no such thing. 
They don't have a list. Okay, there's not a list. See, so so why did they put that phony thing on the team? That's why that's another. Well, speaking of phony, half the things Trump said, he doesn't practice what he preached. Well, the thing about it is this: the campaign is just on him on the undocumented workers. That's all it is. And then then we then now now, now here we, we we had this these these people unfortunately, LBGT, that was shot. Would kill in the 50th and that May, happened today. Today, yeah, the day. Very and sad. he was making the statement about, guess what? Here we go again, undocumented workers. You know, uh, uh, this, this, they, they don't know yet, but they, uh, they did the, the same thing happened in Boston. You know, those two folks, those kids, that, that they blew up the, uh, the this race thing. You remember they were there? Yeah, the thing? Boston Marathon. Yeah, no, wait, that had nothing to do with no, that. No, they community. said they, they had the relationship. They had, it was the Islamic terrorists. Yeah, but that's, these, that's the they're saying connection. this guy, he was an Islamic. In fact, he made the Yeah, I understand from Kay that he was on the watch yes, list. Yes, yes, so they were list. watching him. And how you can buy that that weapon you were telling me was a... Yes, that's right. He was a security guard. And you're guard. on the watch list. Right. How could that happen? And he was a security guard with a gun. Okay, he's security. Uh, and a lot of security yes. guards have guns. And then he called the police and said, 911, I'm ISIS. And I'm out here getting ready to shoot these people. Yeah, but the issue in terms of so let me so we go back to go back to your <laughs> the issue of gun control. What's your stance on gun control? Well, the way things are going, they better they better issue guns to everybody. But they shouldn't be having concealed. Just hey, just be back in the old days. Because in all due respect, it's like saying in so many words. Had someone well, like I say, I mean, in all due respect, you never know. But had someone had a, had a weapon, three hundred people. It just blows my mind to see three hundred people yeah, it is in one tragic. in one person. And one person holding three, 300 people as hostage at right. bay. That blows my mind. It does. I know I couldn't be sitting yeah. in there with 300 people and I wouldn't have done something. Well, you know, the issue, let's go back to the issue of gun control. <laughs> See how hard it is to enter your Bruce Broussard? <coughs> is that many people who want gun control, certainly Second Amendment. I'm yeah, an Oregonian yeah, like yeah, you are. Yeah, yeah. And we love to hunt and fish yeah, and I used so to forth. Hunt. Yeah, I used to hunt, yeah. But... In terms of intelligent gun control, that if I have a restraining order, if you have a restraining order against me, yeah. I couldn't get a weapon. That's right. If I'm on a government watch list, maybe I shouldn't be able to have a uh, weapon. I agree. I so agree. that's the type of intelligent gun control that we're talking about. And a lot of the uh, victims of gun violence are intimate partners, people that you know. And, you know, for you, young black males, we experience a rash. I used yeah. to go to funerals every week well, until one that. day I uh, back in the 90s. Yeah. It took a lot of a law, community law enforcement yeah. and social service yeah. to... Yeah. Stin, you know, to stop the rise of black on black crime, yeah. and now you know some of no that jobs. is rising. Yep. Yeah, no, no, no jobs, jobs, no hope. No it, jobs. To me, I look at uh, gang violence as a public health issue. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. But when you think about gun control today, it's, you don't need you don't need the identification, this, that, and the other, to be legit to get a gun today. Well, that's all why you, some all you people do, just are break into a house. Are, you break into yeah, a house yeah. and you, you can you can buy a gun in this town for that matter. Mm -hmm. Anytime you want to if you got the bucks. Right. Well, not just in the now. cities. A, no, all over the country. All over the country. All, if, you know, and hey, now for you could buy another uh, method in terms of intelligent yeah, gun control yeah, is yeah. to stop the sale of weapon or license the sales of weapons at gun shows. Yeah. Where, as you mentioned, yes. you could buy a gun. Yes. You don't have to have a gun show to go and get a weapon. Right. Well, you're right. <laughs> you want a weapon I mean, in America, America. You can get a, you can get a gun. You can get a gun. You can get a gun. Yeah. You can get a gun. You know what I'm saying? And then if you've got enough money and you know, and you get caught with the gun, yes. uh, you'll be released and you can get another. Well, do you know President Obama has 15 times, I think this morning was the 15th time, he's had to address the issue of mass violence mass shootings in America and that is just and that's just amazing it's going to get worse before it gets better unfortunately he's just I trying to, he's trying to get yeah. that he's trying to get his January in so he can go to one of the about his merry way you know an aspect of it but it's going to get worse it's so, getting, not just just on him it, it was progressing mm -hmm. even when he took office it was still there he now, tried to suppress it with the, okay. with the drones piece where he just pushed the button but that's not going to work now let's now again this is difficult interviewing Mr. Broussard. Let's oh, get back me. to another I'm a interview. very low-key guy. Just, You're a very low-key guy. I'm a very low-key guy. You talked about uh, Ted Wheeler not wanting to come on this show because you yeah. knew and you know issues. What do you think are among the issues the new mayor has to deal with 2016, 17, 18, and 19 uh, in here in, in Portland the new mayor will have to deal with? Well, 
the housing. You know, housing. they've got they've got housing is a very in what key, way? Uh, housing from the standpoint of how, what are you going to do? You know, they got different kinds of things on the table right now. I'm trying to figure out. Well, we're going to come up with some money and we're going to build some houses and we're just going to give them away. Uh, I didn't. I didn't. I don't think it's going to work. Yeah, no, that they, they way. Got, not, not right. It's not going to work. Right. See, so so my thought was initially was that, as far as I'm concerned, Charlie was, he's getting ready to get out. Yeah, and he's he has a gave, big job yeah, he somewhere. Gave, he gave up all the permits, and he got all this, all this high-rise, and all these houses going mm -hmm. in aspect of it. And, and after he, uh, they have to identify so many units from low-income housing mm -hmm. in each of those complexes. Okay. But the moment they came out with the whole issue of, well, we need housing here, we got all, finally they recognize. They already recognize it. Right, but, right. But, but what they should have said at that point in time, call those builders back up and say, hey, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, I need another 10% of the units. Right, they could have done that. They didn't I mean, do that. Well, if you go to Seattle, and I th I can see Portland building like Seattle, yeah, where yeah, we're going to build up, you'll have one floor dedicated for business. affordable housing. Uh, yeah, affordable housing, but business, affordable sometimes housing. business, okay? But affordable the fact housing. of the matter is, they should have done that. Okay, long yeah. ago. Well, they didn't, so... But even now, in addition someone could have addressed it now. Charlie to, could, Charlie could okay. have done it, or Wheeler could have had it done it. All right, well, now Wheeler's in there. Right. So other than housing, what do you think of some of education. the other issues? Education. Education Portland, is Portland not Public part schools. of the charter. Or the, Portland, or the Portland Public Portland. Schools. Education is not on the charter. But why do we give them money every so Portland. often? Why do we, it's, 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 our, it's our future's jobs and this, that, and the other. I mean, if I was the mayor, in all due respect, I would make sure that that would become one of my priorities. I see. Since I've got all the bureaus anyway. Okay, you have all the bureaus. I mean, they would work with me. You think he's going to leave uh, the Ed. bureau? Vote Ed. I know, I agree with you on the vote yeah, Who's, who's handling voke ed? The county can't do it. Right. So who's responsible? I don't think there's a voke ed program here in the Portland They don't Public have it. School. They got it in other school districts. Yeah, they do. They don't have them here. Right. Someone should talk to that piece. They talk about gang situation. Mm -hmm. They talk about this, this, that, and the other. And you, you got to give these people, young people, an opportunity to, uh, to, to be involved, living. to make right. a living, to make a living, to be active. Right. And the other thing is that we need to change our system as far as the school. Mm -hmm. I think when a person graduates from school today, the 12 years, and they can do that. They should have a they should they should have an associate degree at the same time. It's only a two year deal. They could integrate some of those studies and, and still maintain the 12 year the 12 year piece. Yeah, but you have to be able to read and read and, and write and do math at least a sophomore in high school uh, level. But, that, but that's and our children are, are graduating from the Portland Public School unable to do that. Yeah. All you have to do is talk to any community college instructor. Well, well when we were coming up, it was comprehension. Remember. That yeah. was part of the, the class. Yeah. That comprehension is out of it now. I'm just, I'm just throwing that out to you. I'm just saying. So what are some of the in. other issues? Let me redirect you back because it's difficult to interview. Well, homelessness. And okay, homelessness homeless is all issue. about jobs. It's all about jobs. So you got to have someone that, oh, gee, we look like we've gone a little over time. We're going to take a short break. Can we take a short break? I don't know, Bruce. Can you stop for I a few stop. minutes <laughs> and take a short break? I got a signal here. I don't know. He gave me a signal. <laughs> But, but just for you, though, I'm going to do that. I appreciate this, that. This is just great. This is right? great. In fact, and at the same time, we're going to invite Ted Willard on. So maybe if, he, if he's if he's if he's looking at the show, I doubt tell him to come on. Will you think he'll come on? I don't we think take, so. We're going to take a short break, folks. We'll be right back. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Welcome back, folks, to Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, not your host today, but the host is Lenita Duke, and I, this is this is a great interview. I mean, this is just great, folks. You know, we're having some fun, but we're, it's some serious funs. It's very, it's a very serious piece. The issues, but I, I think, in all due respect, Lenita, you'd probably be the only one that could do this. 
I don't know if anyone could interview No, you can because you have a similar background with grassroots news and things of that nature. You've been there many times over. And so it's a pleasure being able to get interviewed by someone because you're not going to give me the softballs. No, I know no. That. So no. That's, that's what I like about it. Okay, so in terms of the local issues, we have a new mayor. You said the issues housing, education, voc education, and the homeless issue. Yeah. Let's talk about national issues. So do you think Trump has a chance? Do you think he might be president? Well, all due respect, with the shootings today, guess what? I was looking forward, like, like I normally do on weekends, on a Sunday, okay. to look at all of the news deals. Right. Okay? Right. It was going to be a bashing day on Trump. Right, right. The president, right. They the president, had, you're absolutely he, correct. The president you're was lined correct. up to basically they were all, all you're lined absolutely up right. to get drunk. Right. And when that shooting happened, all of a sudden this other stuff came on board. Mm -hmm. The wall came up. The, uh, the idea is that well, what about... Uh, uh, checking people out before they come in, mm -hmm. all that stuff come in and say, we can't afford to have this because all we'll do is we'll, we'll just reinforce his position even more. He picked up some votes today. I hate to put it that way, in that kind of a term. Well, he thinks so, too. He thinks he picked up some votes today well, as well. Well, if he, right. if he look, let's put it this way. I know he did because otherwise they would have they would have had the program. Mm -hmm. These are supposed to be sharp people, very articulate folks. Right, they right. said, look, we don't want to have anything to do with, with the shows today. Right. We'll wait for another day. Mm -hmm. And in fact, they said, and by the way, and then Donald, in all, in all due respect, he, he just tweeted something just uh, nice and calmly. Whereas on the other hand, I know he would probably tell him, look, I'm ready to go. <laughs> Why don't you all come in and interview me? I'd like to interview. And he would have just really went on, but he didn't do that. He just did his nice little, little press release and everything was fine. Well, so, based on everything you said, do you plan on voting for Mr. Trump for president in 2016 a, in I, November? Well, in all due respect, I'm a Republican, okay? I mean, you, you give and take. I mean, I'm, I, I've got my own definition for what being a Republican. I still want that history of Lincoln. We still have a history in this country. Lincoln uh, Republicans. Lincoln Would you Republican. expound on that? Well, the idea is that uh, we were part of this country. You know, we, we were basically made as an excuse back in the early days in the Civil War and this, that, and the other. But we were, we were part of this country. You know, we, we were all immigrants at the time. A lot of folks came from England and this, that, and the other. And we were all working together. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, during, during that first part when the British were coming, we were very much part of the, the whole deal. And then all of a sudden it got to be the money, the North and the South. The, the, the South uh, was basically using uh, blacks at the time, picking up their cotton. And on the on the northern end, they were coming into uh, machinery and all that kind of good stuff. So it was about it was a money deal aspect of it. And so the excuse was, well, gee whiz, it got to be about slavery and things of that nature. It wasn't about slavery; it was about that money. The guy who had the slavery. I disagree. The well, Civil War was fought over slavery. No, no, I know. Okay. But, but the individual who's picking up that cotton, he said, no, we're not going to give up that picking up that cotton. Okay. We want to keep that going that way. I'm not trying to take that away from whatever. Mm -hmm. okay. And then now today, we're still talking about slavery. We're still talking about racism. Are you watching Roots? Roots? Oh, yes, the I saw that roots. one. That was a very interesting piece. You notice that? I haven't watched it. I don't like to watch it. The young folks like sleep. yourself said, wait a minute, that first root didn't tell the real story. <laughs> yeah, that's enough of that. <laughs> it's, it's, sick it's of roots. And, and when I, in all due respect, yeah, because it's out there I'm on roots anyway, uh, they did the history channel. They couldn't do it right. under the main it was deal a history because channel. guess what was happening? Because they, they were getting down because the first word out of the, uh, the, 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 uh, one of the actors, Lamar Burton was part of that deal, and I saw the first part of it was they used the word nigger. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, and I said, "What about all the politics of getting that word out of the vocabulary?" And then the uh, and then some of the young folks who were being interviewed say, "Wait a minute, the old folks didn't tell the story right. <laughs> we got to do this thing right." So, it is a new day. We're not going back to, if you will, going back to the fields. Mm -hmm. It's a whole new day. This is America. I just hope that they would go on and tell that history, put it in the books, mm -hmm. educate everybody across the board. We we haven't done that yet. Okay. They need to do that. So that's why I'm a Republican. So I can't be a Republican or Democrat. I can't be like a Bernie Sanders. You know what I mean? Bernie's on both sides. Really. He's, yeah, he's, he's in a different ballgame. Do you think some of the issues that Mr. Sanders brought up, that Bernie Sanders brought up, will filter into Hillary's campaign? I don't, first of all. She, she's not going to allow that. I know. She's not going to allow See, that's it. one thing we agree uh, Yeah, she, she's not going to allow that deal. Right. You know, rightfully so. The guy, is, he's, the, he's got the popular vote. Bottom line, he's got the popular vote. Elect him. They say, oh, no, we, we don't mean that. Mm -hmm. And they're going to do everything they can to raise the money and this, that, and the other. And in, in all due respect, uh, even with the president, president, president Obama, he's kind of caught between a rock and a hard place. 
Yeah, but he did come out and say, I'm with her. Yeah, but guess what? Who's going to hold? What about the service stuff, all that stuff? Is that going to come out? Why don't you just come out straight up? Hey, here's the deal. You, know, you, you think those emails are holding her down their anchor on her campaign? They know how they got their money. Those emails are basically this, it's basically saying, this is how we put that we put that. You think money. she mixed up her um, State Department job, mixed up with her private job with the Clinton, his yeah, um, the, the, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, his business, yeah, the, the perception. Foundation. Everybody has the same perception. Bill was out there basically raising money, right. and then just to make sure that he get those money from those counties, kind of, he had to call countries, back countries, different yeah, countries, countries that are He had to call back the, the State States, Department right. and say, "Hey, look here, this is real. She's the she's the blah blah okay. blah routine. She's gonna be the next president aspect of it." And she get on the phone. Yeah, thank you very much. No problem. Oh, you Give think up he the money. used the oh, possibility? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on, Ooh, let's that's get it deep. right. Okay, but it's real. Look at it. Well, let's go even further. Do you think that uh, Bill and Trump made a deal so Trump would run for president to knock off Bush? No, I don't do respect. I think it was a well. Because they're part of the same class. This, this, this is my. This is my. This is let's my. Let's hear thought. what you okay. have to say. Here's, here's, my thought, here's my thought about the whole piece. Okay. I think folks sit around the table. Right. We got a problem here. Okay. We got a problem with these undocumented workers, and nobody wants to touch it. Okay. Nobody wants to touch it. I disagree, have to deal. but I'm, we I'm wanna, listening we to need, you. We I disagree to, with okay, you. Okay, <laughs> but we need to deal with this issue. Okay. No politician would want it, want it to handle it. Hey, man, I, I don't want to touch it, whether I'm a Republican or a Democrat. I don't want to touch this issue. Because they didn't touch it beforehand. The Democrats had That's it at true. one point in time. They could no just go. One really no one really talked about that particular deed, issue, right? You got me? Right. And no one wanted to bring up the issue about who hired them. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of folks have been but going to jail. But that's the real issue now. No, but, but yeah, I know. These businesses but, but hiring. Yeah, but they're not going to, look, in this country, you're not going to, people are not going to say, well, look, we're going to put all the business folks in jail. They don't do it that way here. And that's this country. We, people, we've been, so my point is that, hey, there was only one, one person in town that's willing to take the job. And, he has nothing to lose. Uh, Mr. Trump can do it. He's got the charisma. He doesn't even drink liquor. He's got a family. He's very legit. You know, he's done, he's done a lot of things. He's dealt this, that, and other. So, hey, just put him out there. That's now, a that's very just, that's just interesting my, that's hypothesis. My, okay. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so <laughs> no one can beat him right now under those deals. Well, he's the uh, Republican nominee, so now we're going to have Trump versus Hillary, and there is a possibility that Trump could win. Hey, right now, I'm telling you, this stuff that we saw t yesterday, well, actually, yeah, last night, about the shootings and this, that, and that, we're going to see more of that stuff. By the time the election comes around, he's going to win. Well, I hate to talk about Trump and then bring up the great Muhammad Ali. Oh, that was let's that was change the, oh, yeah, the that was, that was pretty, subject yeah. the for a minute. That was yeah. a champ. That was a Do champ. you think he was the greatest? Oh yes, very much so. Especially after we, you know, we saw all of the, you know, the, the protocols and people mm -hmm. uh, outpouring of support outpouring for him. I didn't yeah. know about some of the things that he had done. Right. Uh, you know, the, the big thing was that was when he became a Muslim. You know what I mean? During right. That and he time. was. A, I had a, a a friend of mine who's a Muslim. She said that he was one of the first uh, first Americans. Yeah. That proved you can be a Muslim and an American simultaneously, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that was unheard of uh, on a mass scale. But he was, but he was I mean, Ali. Were, but he was Ali. He was Ali. He, in, yeah. fact, in fact, he could have been the lead guy. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's how heavy he was. He was able to go anywhere he wanted to. You know, he, he, it was just it was a one of a kind. He was one of he a was kind. a one right. of a kind aspect of it, and it was just enjoyable. And then to to see the folks that were coming to the table, Bill was there. You know, Bill Clinton was yeah, there. Yeah, he you know, was and there. I, and I was, I've always, yeah, I like Bill to a certain degree. Well, you know, a lot of people out. like Bill, but I'm afraid of what he'll do to this country. Yeah, but like I say, remember now, when he, when he, after he got through with that second term, that, that, mm -hmm. that, that second term, where did he live? In, In Harlem. Just for eating neck symbol. bones, eating neck bones and just, greens. Just for eating a neck symbol. Neck bones and greens with, with, with Al Sharpton. And the rest of the just guys. as a I symbol. Saw his, I saw his place. He didn't even have to have security. I mean, people just loved him, you know, because he related to black folks big time. So what do you think he's going to do in office? You think he'll mess around with another intern? Well, I mean, I, I think Hillary knows where he's at. I think they've, they've gotten an agreement. I hate to put it that way. You know, people now, they put agreements together. She's ambitious. You, you, she you need is a ambitious. tough. You need a tough person for, the, for our time. She might be the right person for the timing aspect of it. That's a tough job. To yeah, take it, it is a from tough this job, point on, right. and she's a tough woman. I, I, I look at her like Golda Meir. Remember Golda Meir yeah, right. from Israel? Mm -hmm. That's who I see her as being. But okay. but you have to have all those those negative things 
to be in a position that you can lead. Mm -hmm. So the key is that are they going to are they going to they got they got the option, and I think to a certain degree, if in fact she is, if she is, they're going to forget about some of this other stuff just to see whether or not at least three quarter at least I say a little over half of the people are supportive. If they do that, come on the table because she can't talk mm -hmm. to some of the issues that mm -hmm. Trump can talk about, right? And she can't talk to some of the issues that Bernie's Bernie talking about. about. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, if in fact she is. Then they're going to pick and choose, and she'll start relating. She can't start talking about this amnesty stuff. Right, you know and that. you know, if she is, I predict, and I've already had a couple predictions, I predict that she will get us in a war. We will have a war under uh, President Clinton. We already are. Well, I know but we're in a, 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 a small-scale war, right? Skirmishes. Compared to her, I predict that she'll get us in a serious high level war and I don't know who it'll be with but I I think you know one thing you say about Obama the wars that he's gotten us involved in did not involve what they were not large scales they were we, just we, we don't, drone we, wars no, no we don't know that well that is true but they're drone <laughs> we, wars we, we don't know that. right now yeah. there's probably a drone flying around right. as soon That's as Bruce is off the button. air push this, push it's going to get him <laughs> <laughs> There's a drone out there that's, that's right, waiting that's right, for Mr. Right, Broussard. Right. No, I just get a batch but, of Marines uh, and we go down there and take care of business. <laughs> I mean, I but he got us involved in drone wars, okay? But I think with President Clinton, she will get us involved in a large-scale war because she wants to prove her lady balls. Well, that, uh, can you say that on TV? Uh, yeah, you can. But, Lenita, you got to remember something. What? We don't have that many people here anymore. You know what I mean? Right front with you. I mean, that's one of the reasons why people are just sort of on the edge with this undocumented workers' piece. I think we well, should bring back the draft. People, they, now that women oh, yeah, they should go into, we oh, should yeah. bring the draft back. Yeah, oh, yeah, yes. they, they should do that. And I think people, once the draft is instituted again, that people will look at war very well, differently. Just like Israel. Yeah, just like Israel, but it's pushing the button. They're in, the, they're in that button thing, Mose. We basically. Well, let's say that. Trump becomes president. And, you know, he has the emotional temperament of a 14 year old mean girl. Oh, no, he's all And right. as soon as someone pisses him off, which will be within a week of his presidency, we're definitely going to war, baby. Well, you know, in all due respect, <laughs> it's almost like. Is almost like President Obama. Anybody who runs for office the first time around, you can say anything, but the moment you get that book to tell you when you get when the you get elected codes. and say, "Hey, now this is what you got to do. Right. This is what you can do. This is what you can't do." Mm -hmm. Once you get that book, you're right in that. No, no man's an island. As woman say, no woman's an island. Do you no, think it, Trump, if he becomes president, oh, the first thing he's going to do is build a wall? No, we're building a wall. <laughs> we're building a wall right now. By okay. putting the issue on the table, we got to do something with the undocumented worker piece. It has to be settled. This, this, the, the presidency that we're running in right now is going to solve that problem. If well, I disagree sudden, with you, Bruce. I think we uh, have to deal with trade policy, and we need to bring back small manufacturing okay, jobs. You need jobs. And I don't. Th I think those two issues are totally separate. Oh no, they're not interdependent the way that you're you think they are. But uh, I honestly believe that when Hillary, if Hillary becomes president, that she'll certainly get us in a war. You want you want her to be elected? Are you who are you going to vote? I, I, who are you going to vote for? Now you're a Republican too. I'm, I'm a Republican too. Who are you going to vote but for? But I voted. I wrote in Bernie Sanders' name. Uh, well, you, I you, like you Bernie have that Sanders. option. You know, you have that option. I like what he was uh, saying. I like uh, the way he appealed to people. I'm really torn. I don't like either candidate, the Republican or Democratic nominee, I am really torn. At this point in but time, I'm gonna be undecided. President. But one of them's going to be president, right? Yeah, but there's a, uh, the Libertarian choice, and I can still write in Bernie Sanders, and I might just write in Jesse Jackson. I Why do you write in me? I might me, as well write in Bruce Broussard. Put me in there. I'll take yeah, care of business. Yeah. I'll take care of business. And that's what we call an undervote on the ballot, <laughs> right? If you, I'm gonna, you should have the election commissioner come right. in here from Multnomah right. County right. and it's tell right. people what, what happens when you deal. vote. That Let's is a that. great idea. That's a good idea. What Let's does do undervote that. mean? Do what that. does overvote that's mean? A, that's a good idea. That if you write in Bugs Bunny that's, for president, that's right. what does do. that do, they do to your ballot? Does Which it invalidate do. your ballot? No, it How is that counted? No, no. They got, yeah. So I think that's a great idea. Bugs Bunny is on there all the time. I think. <laughs> And, and you know, it's unfortunate, name. but you're right. Yes, yeah. right. Or people fact. write in their name or yes, the name of their yes, grandmother. Yes, yes, I think yes. my grandmother would have been a great yes, president. Yes. But what about the Electoral College? You know, it still makes the point oh, about Oh, yeah. Well, uh, Bernie piece. put the Electoral College on blast when yes. he talked about those super delegates. They should have changed But at that the long same time, time 
if he had not run for president, he would have been a superdelegate. Yeah, it's yeah, very yeah. interesting, yeah, that whole yeah. superdelegate process. Well, that whole electoral college thing still maintains that a few people run the whole show. Right. Now that, that's bottom line. That's the one thing yeah. I agree with you. <laughs> you agree. No, that's, the, that's number two. Okay. So you said that, you agree with me on something else once before. Yeah, that's true. That okay. is number yeah. <laughs> two. But the fact, but the point we of the both matter is, Love Muhammad Ali and and will miss oh, yes. him. Oh yes, oh, that's yes. one thing oh, we yes. agree on. But you know the other thing he said too at the last part. Of one of the things that really came out loud and clear, regardless of all the negatives and this, that, and the other, he said, "This is the country. Mm-hmm. I love this country. I love my country." And you know, and I thought it was very fitting in all of the so-called things that we're going in right now. It's a very, it was a very timely, timely funeral. Let's put it that right. way. You got me. I and know. And then good. the very next day, you have. A shooter who yeah. said he's with ISIS yes. shoots all those innocent people. Yes. What is it, 50 people? Yeah, 50 That's people. That's horrific. That's and, and horrible. There's going to be more. And you know what? There'll but be another Amer- shooting next week. he's an American week. citizen. That's, yeah. And then before that, that, that little, uh, the girl, the young girl that was on The Voice, the young lady who was shot by a yeah. deranged fan, yeah. Yeah. she goes to hug him and bam. Yeah. Gun Intelligent gun control. Now, yeah. I'm an Oregonian. I believe in hunting and fishing, but I still believe in intelligent gun control. Yeah, but, but my point is that we may, you may believe in it, mm-hmm. but the person out there on the street who has to, one, make a living, right, makes a living. Some of them are selling guns, right, in some cases. And then, uh, and then another way is they, they got to eat. Everybody's got to eat. And but you I, still should be able to benefit financially without selling a gun to someone who has a restraining order or selling to someone on the government watch list. I mean, in case shared with us that the guy, the shooter, was is on the government watch list. Yeah. He should never have been able to yeah. have a weapon, especially one that's powerful but as it, AR-15. But, it, but it's all after the fact. Right. And, and, you know, and that's the thing that bothered me. Like I said, it bothered me. He had all these people at bay. Mm-hmm. He called 911 to the cops. That's what you mentioned, yes. And the cops said, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm out loud. I'm getting ready to do it. Right. And then they come down and they try to do the negotiations to try to right. get into there. Right. And then I'm sitting there saying, well, okay, I'm still saying that if that was the case, and those 50 people, and then and they, you're saying and then they more rushed than one in, and they rushed in there, he didn't shoot 50 people. The other folks that went in there, when they had that oh, gun, my. when they had, yeah. that, when they had yeah. that deal inside, so, the cops shot some of the folks, too. But, you know, so it was a, it was a fight. Gunfight. So there's a lot of things that's happening. I don't right. know everything. Now, I hadn't considered that. I, I, I'm just looking at the news just like right. anybody else. You know, Collateral right? damage. Yeah, that's what yeah. they call it. And, and, you know, and, and another point I would say, if something's on your mind, say it. Mm-hmm. That's the other thing. We need to talk more. People need to talk more. Well, you have no trouble talking. Well, but the point is, but some people don't want to talk. Okay. I mean, I, I've invited all the, and I'll say it again. I, I'd like to see me- Mexican citizens of this United States come on this show, and we need to talk about the issue of undocumented workers. I think I, I had a gentleman that somebody, worked on my this? campaign. I can certainly ask him to come. Yeah, I mean, on because and, we and need. Talk. He needs to talk about this. They need right. to talk about this because they are behind the gun, if you will. Mm-hmm. You got my point? And but not all, all look Americans no, but, but right now are all, undocumented. But right now they all look alike, if oh, you understand Bruce. what I'm talking about. I hate to put it that way. Uh, no, no, but, I'm, but I'm willing to. But that's why I want to have them to come to the table. I want to come to the table. I'm going to set that up. Grassroot News will set Please that up Please set that up right. because they need to talk about this. I can't talk about it. Okay. I can't speak I know, Spanish. look at you. I can't speak Spanish. You can still talk about it without speaking Spanish. You can't, can't? Of, I've yes. done it. I've said it now. That impeccable English. Impeccable? Some of some members uh, have impeccable English. You I don't need to speak I, I can't Spanish even, I can't even speak to talk English. about this issue of undocumented. English. I can't even speak English. And it's not just Mexicans. Spanish. You have undocumented people from Italy. You have undocumented people in I, from Ireland. You know, it's not just that particular uh, country, Central and South America. But I don't see, when there's a major demonstration, I don't see uh, Honduran flags or this. I see. Mm-hmm. Mexico's That's true. Right. Point That's, blank. They're and proud. I, they're a proud. They're people. supposed to be. They're right next door. Right. I like to go to Mexico. I got I got friends that are you know, like people say. Some of my best friends yeah, are Mexican. You know, some, That's why I don't some of go my that best way. friends are Jeez, colored. Right. But see, but my point is that I want and my friends can't come on the show and talk about it because they've got family. They're talking about family. Yeah. Well. And, yeah, and I so, hear you. but they need to talk about it. They need to talk about it. Right. I agree. Right, I right, agree. Right. And we shouldn't let Trump talk about it or let Trump define this issue. Well, th- that's why he's defining it, because no one wants to talk about it. Well, maybe Think you're right. It. See what I'm saying? That's but I disagree with how he's talking about it, and uh, I think given how he's behaved, I mean, do you trust this man in, in the White House? Do well, you it, trust Well, they vetted him. He's running for president. 
right? Yeah, and, and you can vote for not, him or not. Yeah, yeah, you, people you can either vote for him right. or right. Clinton. Okay. Uh, right, right? Right. You're right. You're okay. absolutely right. You can't do Bernie. They they don't want Bernie in there. Bernie, I know Bernie, they don't want poor Bernie guy. In but he's got poor the, Bernie. But he's got the popular vote, but he's forgetting about the electoral vote. He can't get those. He always talked about how superdelegates well, well, were well, torpedoing well, no, his that, chances. That, that'll always be. Yeah, and they the Democratic the Democrats, which is why I'm not a Democrat, they created that system right. to make sure that the superdelegates would be able to choose a president yeah, no matter That's who right. people voted for. And say that clearly. The yeah. Democrats did that purposely, right? Well I'm not a not Democrat. The Republican. I know that, but you said yeah. that's why that's See, they did they that, caused right. that problem. Right. And you know who set that that in? Mm. Your boy Clinton. You gotta be kidding. He me. set that up. Yes, sir, he did. I remember I invited him for greens and he didn't come that day. He didn't come for greens? Come My green. goodness. Everybody, that's it. That's he was plotting on that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that's because you put he, turkey no, in your greens. Right, he wouldn't pick he up wanted to, pork in his no, greens. He wanted <laughs> neck bones. Yeah, he wanted <laughs> neck bones. That's what it was. I mean, is it, I mean, it very, I, mean I, I like to talk about him that way because that's that's how he got that heart attack. You know, he's up there eating all that, that good food. He, I guess so. He, I he, guess, he, now he's a vegetarian and he's losing his voice. Yeah, Let's hope uh, we don't have to hear any more from him. Yeah, it's well, Bruce, guy. finally, in the local issues, uh, you said housing, education, book education, we homeless one, issues. We about a minute, minute, minute. I, I really appreciate you talking and yes. allowing me to interject every now and then. This has not been an interview <laughs> with Bruce Broussard. No one can interview Bruce Broussard. Thank you for all your hard work I you like did it. on voting. Can I interview next time? You next time? I, can I do that? Absolutely. I, I would like to see that. <laughs> on grassroots news. Can we grassroots do that? news. I, I want to get to those folks. I might, I might need those votes next time around. Told you he's Does running. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? <laughs> okay, folks. But no, this has been very enjoyable. I really appreciate that. And, and I'm not taking in what we were talking about lightly. I, I've said some things in such a way that, that hopefully you can listen to what I'm trying to say. Then you sit down around the table and talk about these issues. In fact, we may, may next time around, I'll open up the lines and get you to call in because most people tend to, they don't, they don't just call in, they just try to do their own show. You know what I'm saying? Rather than answer the questions. But the bottom line is that we invite you to, to get together talk about these issues. Very, very important this time around. This new mayor, Mayor Will, is going to need some help. So yeah. you're going to give him a call and tell him what the issues are. Not necessarily what Bruce Broussard say. What you say. That's a very important. I just happen to have this vehicle to do that. But you need to say to him exactly what the problems are. Okay? Mental illness, housing, senior citizens. I can go right down the line. But with that, hey, look, thank you very much for being with us. We'll see you next week. Father's Day next week. Now, gays are going to be having a parade. I don't, I don't like that idea. We're going to have some fathers here talking about this. I've fought that for years. Anyway, see you guys next week. Take care.